should we call them? All right, I will call the meeting to order of the um, June 11th meeting of the Visitor Services Advisory Committee. And David or Chantal, will you please read the protocol? Do you want to do it, David, or should I have it here? I'll do it since you're hunting. Okay. <clears throat> so we just want to make it clear that for all town for um all town of Nantucket boards, committees, commissions, work groups, councils, and trusts, um, we follow Robert's rule of order to govern its meetings as per the town code charter. Uh, we do allow for public comment, which is taken at the start of the meeting. Public comment is not an opportunity for uh, for a conversation. Um, if there are uh, things uh, that are brought up throughout during public comment, we the chair um, can um, order that it be placed on a future agenda for a conversation or a discussion. Um, and public comment is to bring matters of public interest to the attention of the committees. At the committee's discretion, matters raised under public comment may be directed to town administration and or appropriate departmental staff or may be placed on a future agenda, allowing all viewpoints to be represented before the committee takes action, if any. Except in emergencies, the committee will not normally take any other action in public comment in its sole discretion. This um, June 11th meeting of the Visitor Services Advisory Committee is happening via Zoom. Um, as a preliminary matter, this is Chantal Blaise Murphy, supporting staff. Uh, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Mary Malavis. Here. Matthew Peel. Here. Peter Morrison. Here. Garrison Beal. Here. Niles Parker. Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. David Sharp. Here. And Chantal Blake Murphy is here. Anticipated speakers on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. Peter Burke. Here. Thank you, Peter. Good morning. Morning. Um, so this open meeting of the of VSAC is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. We will, of course, take public comment, though I do not see any members of the public present. Um, we are convening via, uh, via uh, video conference uh, via Zoom, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference accordingly. Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured in the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. The chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until the, your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate meeting, meeting minutes. For any responses, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. And that is that. I will yield the chair to you, Madam Chair. Floor to you. Thank you, Thank you Shanta. <laughs> Moving down the agenda, item three, approval of the May 14th meeting minutes. They have all been distributed in advance of the meeting. Are there any corrections from anyone on the committee? All right, hearing none, may I have a motion to approve as printed? Motion to approve. Matt, is there a second? A second by Peter. Thank you, Peter Morrison. I will do a roll call for the vote. Um, Matt Peel. Aye. Peter Morrison. Aye. Garrison Beal. Aye. Niles Parker. I should probably have stayed. I wasn't present. Thank you, Niles, and myself, Mary Malavez, except as written uh, the minutes from the last meeting, which was May 14th. 
Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a conversation with Peter Burke. Welcome, Peter. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join all of us who have busy schedules. It's that time of year. Um, obviously, we know that the Chamber and Visitor Services have always worked hand in hand for, I'll, I'll admit it, generations. So yeah. I think it's important uh, that you be here, update us on anything um, that's going on with the Chamber and any way Visitor Services can assist yeah. you once people are here on the ground. Thank well, you, thank Peter. You very, yeah, I appreciate you having me back. Um, it's always fun to chat with this group. And uh, it's nice that, um, you know, it's not a lot of first timers here. We all know each other pretty well, which is makes things a little easier. So yeah, I just wanted to start off. I was I was reading your minutes, you know, in the agenda packet and saw that, you know, Chantal had provided the Daffy numbers report. And uh, I don't think we could have had a better daffodil weekend. And I know it's not uh, a one person thing. It takes the entire island. It takes, um, you know, uh, all the groups here, but also the, I feel like we had more volunteers than we've ever had. And, and I know that doesn't happen by accident. Uh, so I wanted to thank everyone on this call for helping us execute a really great daffodil weekend. Uh, Mother Nature obviously threw us a pretty big layup um, with some great weather. Um, but even with good weather, it takes a lot of coordination and and uh, and months leading into that good weather of planning. Um, so thank you very much for that. And then, you know, only some small changes that the biggest change we have on schedule next year for Daffodil is we are at this point, we need to change the way we open the registration for cars. Um, my first year here, it was a, a like a, a six day, you know, fill up time slot. The year after that, it was 10 hours. The year this year was it was two hours, the, the 200, you know, or 110 parade spots had filled up. So the feedback we've gotten so far has been we don't want to turn this into some you know mad max race to get you know to your computer at eight in the morning when we open the the daffodil sign up so at some point we're looking at a lottery the window will open for call it a two-week period and then we will draw names to determine who gets in the parade and whether we wait certain portions of that number say half the tickets have to go to the Nantucket residents or is it previous parade goers those are the sliders we don't know exactly how we're going to tune and I'm, I'm open to suggestions. You don't have to yell them out here. You can email me those suggestions, but it's very clear that the time window opening method has proven to be exclusionary of some people who maybe just dropped their kids off at school or were stuck in traffic off island or were traveling. Um, so we don't want minor you know, human interactions to, to prevent people who have been in the parade for years and years to get a spot. So at the end of the day, it's great that we had the participation and interest, but uh, frustrating for a lot of people. So we're trying to reduce the stress and uh, kind of increase the, I'll say equity or fairness of how we, how we handle the parade registration. So uh, that's some of the changes you might see for next year. Any, any, oh, uh, sorry, Mr. Peel. Yeah, Mac, through the chat. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Mac. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Pete, I'm just curious, uh, since you're on the topic of that, what is the, does the registration for the cars exactly line up with how many spots in, on Main Street and Sconset or whatever? Is that, are they correlated or? Yeah, I have a feeling that number, from what I understand, was generated and given to us by the town in the permitting process, the number 110, because some of them are fire trucks and some of them are motorcycles. And I think a lot of that has to do with Sconset, I would guess, and also the route through town and Main Street space. I would guess all those things were factored in. Um, but yeah, that number is a predetermined, not by us. Okay. Yeah, because I wasn't sure if you guys could like separate, you know, maybe have a lottery for how many spots are on Main Street for people to set up and then have like a separate just the car parade because I think the car parade's great. Like I didn't make it out to Sconset, but we stopped on the side of milestone so all the kids could watch the cars and stuff go by. So I wasn't sure if that was expandable to maybe go to like 200 cars for the parade, but then only have limited spots in Wisconsin. So just, it's just a something. good question and nothing's off the table or uh, sorry, I guess addressing it through the chair. Yeah. Nothing, no, go ahead. Nothing's off the, off the table. We're always open to ideas. Um, I know we're at, we're approaching, we just had Daffy 48. We're approaching 49. I, I think, you know, without uh, uprooting tradition, we need to look at, is that the best space for the car parade? And like, do we need to have a bigger space like Tom Nevers and still have a picnic in Sconset? I'm not saying I want to do that. I'm not saying we should do that. I'm just saying those conversations need to be had because 
if the interest keeps growing, then public safety comes into concern and making sure that we can give everyone a good experience. And, you know, how do we make sure that we keep a lot of those traditions, but also um, make sure that we're, we're, you know, being safe and equitable for people who want to attend. Yeah. So. Uh, Peter, I have a question about the age of vehicles. Sure. Has there been any discussion of pushing it back to older? <laughs> I, yes. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. We actually raised it two years uh, this year. Um, so I think it went from 35 to 38. Uh, but as you know, the time, as the time continue marches on, we start, if you keep that 38 year, let's just say we kept that forever, you just start to run into cars that were built with materials that lasted longer and aren't in the classic nature, but are still defined as antique based on just the the, the clock ticking. Um, so it's definitely a, a consideration we've had um, and certainly for a portion of them, if not all. So it's to say, hey, if we have a, a category of cars that are, you know, 50 years and up, like for, for Daffodil 50, I would love to have some at least 50 year old cars, you know, that would be kind of cool. So um, it's yeah. another, another lever we can pull is uh, making sure we don't exclude any really cool cars that might be right on the cusp of joining in the current age window, but also making sure that we're keeping the traditional and classic nature. The the last thing I want to see is the Pontiac station wagon that I drove up to high school in the in the Daffy Parade. <laughs> it just doesn't belong. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Peter. Go ahead. Sure. Any questions on Daffy or, or any suggestions before I move along? I don't want to, I, I guess, Madam Chair, through you. But. No, no, please, please continue. <clears throat> Great. So um, now that we're through Daffodil, um, the next call it singly, uh, you know, chamber produced events start to get a lot smaller. So we've got a lot of education workshops um, and our team's focus in between that daffodil, you know, end of April and now really has shifted to, um, and this is less for visitors, but a happy and safe Nantucket workforce is good for all visitors, right? So if if visitors coming to the island have, you know, uh, frustrating experiences at restaurants or out and about because staffs are overworked or not properly trained and all that, we're trying to make that burden a little bit easier for our for our member businesses. So we did put out a membership guide. I, I put it out via email. There's a lot of communication going on about, about a lot of things, but it also lives on our website. That really is aimed at business owners and not necessarily tourists. But because you're all very well connected into the into the um, community, there's some you know just a collection of resources in there, including food insecurity resources. Right. This is when. Patty at the at the food bank or the food pantry sees the most first time one time users from people who are bridging you know first paychecks or underestimating grocery costs. So we've got some resources listed in there. Other than the food pantry, we also have the free bike helmet program that Jim Perlman has. Uh, we were able to um, upgrade that program with um, a, an insurance sponsor for money and then burn bike bike helmets who make really slick and and quite frankly popular and and cool looking helmets. Um, so that if you see people riding to work that you know you see all the time that just might not be able to afford a helmet, send them over to gym, we'll give them a free helmet. Things like that, we we do think that links into tourism less directly than engaging directly with the end user tourist, but we do feel that there is a a little gap and a, and a role we can play in, in helping businesses make it a little bit easier to be an employer and therefore having their employees be a little bit easier uh, transition time, especially this time of year. So um that's one thing we put out. I can provide that in a PDF. Uh, like I said, it lives on our website, on our business resources page. It's also on the chamber membership portal. Uh, easy to find for anyone who needs it. Um, in that is the bike safety campaign. I had a great meeting with um, Sergeant Rocket and the CSOs. And we talked about um, they're obviously they're not tourism operators, but they they turn into them. And obviously we know it's bathrooms and where to eat. Um, so we we tried to help uh, bridge the gap with some of their knowledge and and where to find the the public restrooms in town and and also the bike safety to make sure that they know that we care about it and so if they see you know employees or tourists having a tough time figuring out how to bike around the island you know we're happy to to have people up in our office and and give them the five second tour on driving the correct way down the roads and walking their bikes in town and we just wanted to be safe at the end of the day that's a big campaign for us. Um, Lastly, for the summer, uh, obviously, we shift away from, again, stroll up uh, chamber-produced events and start supporting a lot of the events that are already happening. Um, Chantal and David, your 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 crew and, and your facility obviously handles a brunt of the, the walk-ins. We're doing our best off-island uh, in terms of marketing and advertising for the next couple of months, 
to really promote um, not bringing cars uh, to riding bikes or bringing bikes or renting bikes, renting bikes, good for commerce. Uh, the wave being, being fair free is a huge help this summer. Uh, I personally have taken more advantage of that. I don't know why the $2 was stopping me. It shouldn't have, but there's just something about it. And it says fair free. It makes it more enticing. So um, couldn't say enough about, about the wave. We did put some advertising out uh, about the fair free um, wave, but uh, part of that uh, messaging is with experiences um, based on some information we get, we hear from the state and Mott and their tourism activities, good food and restaurants are now the baseline. And then if you don't have those things, you know, you're in trouble, but a lot of places have good food and good lodging. I think would put the argument out that we have the best food, you know, collectively we've traveled a lot of places. It's harder to find a better collective, you know, group of restaurants. But that being said, we're starting to highlight as many of the experiences we can. That might be kayaking, biking, uh, sailing on either charter boats or renting ones from community sailing. Uh, also the fishing charters, the adventure sports that Force 5 has. Those types of activities are, we're finding, also help tip the scales of when people are deciding where they want to go for vacation. Block Island might not have all of those things. And you know, Portland, Maine doesn't have the nice warm water that we have. Um, so that's kind of the messaging and, and the approach we're taking. Um, we haven't launched a huge national campaign on that. Uh, but that's, you know, as we start to play small ads and we have a couple in the hopper, um, we pr have started to pro promote the live theater. I know we, we've taken a half step back with White Heron in the unknown, but certainly theater workshop, film festival, comedy festival. We are doing our best to uh, promote the things to do. So that's kind of the overall messaging uh, that we have. And I'm happy to field any questions or concerns or comments uh, on that. Um, Peter, I have a question. In terms of off-island marketing, has the MOT grant stayed similar to previous years and there are restrictions on how you can use that? It's a great question. Um, the restrictions have remained essentially the same. They have certain allocation for admin and, and, and you know, administrator would use to print, produce, help produce the guidebook and also uh, offset some of the salaries. But the um, where you can spend it is typically outside of a 50 mile radius. Uh, the things you can spend it on, you know, have remained similar. Uh, we actually did see a pretty substantial drop in the MOT budget. Um, this FY24, and we're expecting the similar for FY25. The reason was FY23, as we've come to learn, um, included uh, a gambling portion, right? So when the casinos came in, the state made some provisions and there's, I believe, a 1% skim from, from in-person gambling, not app gambling. And I believe the state set a minimum, a floor of that for the year one. And the floor actually outpaced the actual percentages from year two. So that's why there was a dip is because there was an artificial bump in the gambling con contributions to the MOT, the entire MOT budget. Um, so it wasn't a ton, you know, it was probably a, ended up being, well, I guess it was a pretty substantial cut, but uh, we lost maybe 15 to 20% of, of the 23 to 24 That is 15%. Um, so that was a little bit of a, of a tough one, but we just, you know, we adapted and adjusted and we are expecting similar budget to be announced. We also didn't get the budget until December, uh, which was really frustrating. We ended up with, uh, with our chamber activities. We were able to sustain, but some of our MOT partners around the state that don't have a chamber as part of their RTC had to make some really tough decisions from uh, layoffs and temp holds um, and that kind of decision-making. We were fortunately able to weather the storm, but um, MOT has committed to providing a more timely release of funds uh, for FY25. Okay. I, I always worry about funding for the chamber. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it is a, it is a membership based. So, yeah, we, we do need some outside help. Um, Peter, anything else you want to add? Any other upcoming? Fall? As as an avid lover of all things Christmas, but I hate <laughs> the Christmas decorations up before Thanksgiving. It pains me to say that we've started producing Stroll. Um, Stroll 50. It's a big one this year. And I think I hope that everyone understands our hope is not to bring 70,000 people for stroll. Our hope is to really round out the entire stroll experience. 
And yes, Saturday of stroll is still a great day. I hope to see people out there having fun and being safe. And we're going to, you know, have a, a great tree lighting. I know it's going to be awesome on, you know, the week before that, but I think there's some opportunities just like we've seen with Daffodil. We've been able to stretch out the flower crown parties on Thursday instead of, you know, the weekend starting on Friday. We had a really great Sunday jolly jam for community members last stroll Sunday really aimed at if you have the thing at Sunday at three, you're going to get a lot more locals and visitors. Um, we're hoping to round out the what's happening at stroll as opposed to increasing the total number of people. At some point, the number of beds, you know, exists and the number of, of, uh, hotels are here and that's the, that's what it is. Um, but we've started to do some of the, uh, initial planning a, a month and a half ahead of time than we would normally would have just cause it's a big one and, and we're hoping to make it, um, fun and happy for everyone. I see a hand, um, up in the audience. Uh, all right, David. Yeah, um, Peter, um, you had a restaurant weekend that just uh, came and went. Um, any uh, feedback from that? E yes, actually, if you just give me one moment, I we were so we we measure. Um, we're not tapped into the, uh, you know, the restaurant, you know, points of sale or anything like that. So we measure. I was trying to pull it up. I don't have it on this laptop. I'm actually working remotely today uh, with this, an interest of public safety and the flu. Uh, the We measure by Google Analytics. So when we took over Restaurant Week last fall, we developed that Restaurant Week landing page and we just told the restaurants, we're not going to tell you what tiers to do. We're not going to tell you what pricing to do. You do whatever you want. Tell us what you're going to do and we'll put it on our website. And then we made all of our advertising efforts drive to the Restaurant Week website. It's the only way we could think to do it without being unfair to one or, or promoting one restaurant over another. Um, so we saw a 9,000 unique visits to that restaurant week landing page. It's probably a little bit higher than that. It was eight, eight on Thursday morning of last week. And it ran through Thursday. Some restaurants extended it uh, through the week. Um, we always were told Friday and Saturday, no restaurant needs help. So don't worry about having restaurant week deals, but some of the water cooler feedback uh, was just run it for the week and we'll figure out what to do. Uh, which was really encouraging. So we had 25 participating restaurants that varied from something natural. If you bought a sandwich and a drink, you got a cookie. That's great. That's part of restaurant week. If you were at the Pearl, 75 course, there are $75, three course Dune, I think was 68 bucks, something like that. So really great to see it. Um, most, all of the restaurants, at least that I've heard from have said it was a lot of success. They were able to draw in either exposure or, um, see new customers. The real test is if the group that came in this last week comes back more often than they would have. That's our hope. Um, so by my measurements of success, uh, we'll send out a restaurant feedback survey to the 25 participants and just ask for their inputs, but happy to hear any near. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Peter? I know the chamber is busy, Matt. Hey, Peter. Uh, yeah, I was just curious, um, you know, it, we, we kind of hear all the, the rumor and things like that out there, you know, bookings are down uh, through the STRs and, and you know, I've been working on the, the work group with the town and stuff. Hopefully we come up with a good compromise and, and kind of solidify all this stuff. But um, I'm just curious what, what you guys are kind of feeling and hearing. I heard like uh, Figali was down. I heard rumors up to like 20% for retail in the town and stuff. I thought it was fairly mellow for Figali this year, but I think that maybe has more to do with the loss of the tents and things like that. And, um, but, you know, I, I'm just kind of curious because, uh, you know, you also hear like uh, we're pricing ourselves out. More people are traveling to Europe and that kind of stuff. I mean, is the chamber giving any messaging to the or feedback for its members of, of, you know, hey, let's not, you know, get ahead of ourselves or anything? Or how do we, I, don't, I know it's kind of a hard subject because, you know, one point we kind of get that pricing and the other point, are are we losing or is it just people opting for something different it's 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 hard to kind of navigate a little bit yeah it, oh sorry um matt thanks for the question mm. um yeah it's a really difficult question it's hard to argue with we'll call it the facts is if you pull up your phone right now and look at a july friday for overnight and you pull it up and look at it in some call it competitive 
tourism destination in New England before you even get to Europe, I do feel like there is that has to come into factor. There is some point people have a certain number of funding amount of funding and and they have to make their vacation planning accordingly. Um, the the Europe question, I think there's no doubt just. I, just from a mathematical standpoint, if you can't travel to some place like Europe for COVID reasons, then then you can. Yes, of course, it makes mathematical sense that we would see a dip in tourism from the internal tourists. The question is, do we get any back from Europe, right? So that's the, you know, are people coming back this way uh, when that when those gates opened up? Um, the other, you know, one of the reasons that we haven't made a huge deal out of it yet is we recognize that it does cost more to operate on the island, right? That's also a fact. We know that, um, you know, wages have increased, the cost of living's increased. It's a little bit of a, you know, uh, building, it's some building momentum, which is really tough for, for all businesses to overcome. Far be it from us to tell people what they can and can't charge for a room or a meal. Um, from water cooler chatter, yeah, we've heard some things like, yeah, the I've heard that high end bookings, are, so that the uh, the month long, you know, six bedroom house booking, those have been call it softened. Those are also the most expensive ones we have. So I I doesn't seem, it doesn't seem unreasonable to to think that that may be happening. Um, it's I go I wish I had better data. I I we obviously subscribe to Placer the same as the town and and Chantal. I saw your your great numbers and reported, um, whether it was last week or the week before. Um, we're still seeing a lot of traffic and I think our, you know, our mindset is trying to get back to pre COVID numbers or, you know, it's always good to look back and make sure you don't make the same mistakes again. But there's also something we said, this is the landscape we have. This is the environment we're in. How can we capitalize on it? And to that point, I think, you know, our messaging needs to be Nantucket's still a great getaway spot and there's still some, you know, uh, we can't say it's the cheapest place. We can't say that. I mean, it's, it's just not going to happen. Um, so we need to figure out your vacation could be the best one you ever had if you come to Nantucket. Why? Because we have a, the the greatest slate of restaurants. We've got the most relaxing places to stay. You know, all those things we can promote. Um, but I think if we try to play the budget friendly game, I think we are in a losing battle. Um, it's not really our, that can't be how we try to retain or gain um, new visitors. I think there are still are deals to be had. And I say that on this call. Yeah. If you, if you're willing to travel midweek and you're willing to be flexible on where you stay, maybe it's a little bit further out of town, uh, whether it's Airbnb being with friends, all those things matter. Um, but at some point the market will regulate as well, right? At some point, if you price yourself out and no one shows up, people have to drop prices. And I'm not an economist by trade and I don't want to get into an economy <laughs> discussion, but that, is a potential that could happen down the road. Okay. Any other questions for Peter? I thought I saw Shanta's hand up, but I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I thought I did too. Shanta, did you have your hand up and take it down? <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, Madam Matt, Chair, just, yeah, just yeah, one quick, yeah, one quick comment for uh, Peter for Stroll. You know, I, Stroll is my favorite, you know, event of the year. I love Stroll. And, uh, I just encourage, uh, I think I said this to you last year as well, um, anything for the kids would be amazing because uh, I know it's kind of more about the the members and the shopping and all of that. And um, uh, But I, I would love it if you guys, you know, did anything, any kind of, you know, something focused more for the kids because I, I think one of my biggest complaints, I think, with Stroll was just trying to get to like Santa Claus. You know, it's hard to get pictures of Santa Claus. I grew up my mom used to take me to Nordstrom's for, I think I got like 30 years of pictures, <laughs> my sister and I, and, um, and I kind of wanted to try to do that tradition out here, but it's like, it's, you can't find a Santa Claus unless you like Nantucket Hotel, things like that. So, um, but yeah, it's, and every time we do, there's like tons of adults. So any like a 12 and under or something like that for kids. And so it's just, just something to think about, you know, uh because i know there's a lot of parents i've talked you know you know little league all that kind of stuff a lot of parents love to get their kids you know pictures taken with santa claus it's just hard to do that so it's a great it's a great feedback and i think you know if we talk about how do we extend the week out a little bit more maybe that is a thursday meet santa component knowing that for the most part we're going to be locals only maybe we have it 
I know back in the day, Marine Home Center used to host more of a Santa's Village. And this was, I'm hearing this from the, you know, former operators and and this is years and years ago. So I'm, I'm not opposed to saying, hey, do we do a local something, um, you know, in the week run up where kids, you know, families can bring their kids out. So it's not, you're not trying to, you know, um, fight the crowds, uh, which not every kid loves, by the way, or parents. But so uh, it's a great idea. And I appreciate it. Appreciate that. Yeah, and and Peter, just to add something from my standpoint, you know, and and a date not involved in the stroll weekend when everyone is working, but something that would accommodate and have adequate parking to make it easy for parents with little people to have access, I think would be great. Shanta. So as a parent of a seven-year-old, <laughs> I often um, go hunting for where can I find Santa on Nantucket. <laughs> and there are so many businesses, the police department that host Santa in their spaces that are open to the public for Island kids to come and, um, and, you know, talk to Santa, take pictures with Santa that I've been thinking about it the same way we do the, uh, the holiday lights map. If we could put a list together of all the places, all the businesses that are hosting Santa that are um, open to the public. I think that would be really helpful over the holiday season. So that's something that I'd be happy for for my office to to take on and kind of put together to make life easier on everyone. And um, Peter, maybe you and I can connect to talk about how we can host like a separate post stroll um, meet and greet with Santa for the kids. I, I yeah. love that. I love that idea. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's great. Yeah, uh, thanks Chantal. And I think that just reinforces the fact that you know, the chamber's here for all residents, seasonal and year round. Uh, and, and uh, you know, what, what would be a good message to send. Any other questions or comments for Peter? All right, seeing none. Peter, you're more than welcome to stay on with the rest of our discussion. But if you are traveling <laughs> with a busy schedule, we totally understand. I appreciate the invite. I will. Uh sign off but um the email address is always open if you have any ideas the conversation doesn't have to end here just you know shoot me an email phone call uh, we're happy to hear from everyone because at the end of the day we're our member-based business the town and visitor services are members and we're trying to support you just as much as you have been routinely supporting us and we really appreciate it all right okay Chantal, was there another comment no thanks pete thank you very much okay. thank you thank you peter uh, thank you Okay, moving on. Next item on the agenda, director's report. All righty, I'm up. Um, I'll start with just a quick run through of what we have going on this month. So on June 5th, so last week, um, we gave our culture and tourism uh, department update to the select board. So that is up online if any of you are interested, um, all the happenings that are, are going on down here. Uh, we met with the CSOs last Friday um to do the uh the the annual training they hit the ground running on monday so they are out and about i highly recommend you uh keep an eye on those parking posts because those orange tickets have been popping up um and then uh looking ahead next week we have our juneteenth celebration this will be our we started this in 2019 i guess and then COVID happened so technically our our um our fourth Juneteenth celebration. It will be at the um, African Meeting House. So that's Wednesday, June 19th. The festivities really start at uh, 10 a.m. over at the Historic Colored Cemetery on um, at 7 Vesper Lane. Fran Cartoonan and Barbara White will be leading a tour of that cemetery. Last year, we had about 79 people show up for that tour. Every year, it seems to get bigger and bigger. So we've decided to split it a little bit have um, Fran and Barbara do one in the morning at 10 and another at noon. At 11 at the meeting house, we have um, Dr. Noel Trent, who is the new president and CEO of the Museum of African American History, Boston and, uh, Boston and Nantucket. Uh, she'll be um, reading excerpts <laughs> from the Emancipation Proclamation and also um, just having a community, community discussion about the importance of Juneteenth. We'll have a, a local high schooler who plays the saxophone. She'll be um, uh, our welcome uh, um, 
the, the, the young lady who will be welcoming everyone to the museum. And then Shishi Fogo will be performing and kind of starting off our little dance train out onto the lawn where we'll have our um, Nantucket Island Creations catering. We'll have um, a DJ. We're really doing it like a full fledged block party the way that all of us Black folks on the island like to celebrate Juneteenth, usually in our backyards, on our friends' backyards. Now we're doing it um, bigger and better uh, community-wide. So I I, um, I highly uh, recommend you all stop by and enjoy it. The museum will be open for folks to check out the Higginbotham Bachman House and um, the Meeting House, and of course, to meet the staff. They do have a new staff member um, that will be starting, so we'll be able to see the museum open uh, more this year. Uh, next, um, 4th of July planning. Um, as you all know, 4th of July is pretty much planned from February, so now we're just kind of waiting for it to really kick in. Uh, we'll have the press release out at the end of this week. Um, I'm just working with the, the food truck um, owners to, to make sure that they all get their permits and all the information that they need for our food truck marketplace that happens on Federal Street um, between um, Maine and Cambridge. And that's from 8.30 to 12.30. There is one slight change to the 4th of July schedule, which is the water contest that happens between the Boynton Lane Reserves and the um, Nantucket Fire Department. Instead of it being at noon, um, it will be at 10.30. What we found is that we block the street at six o'clock in the morning and it stays blocked until one o'clock for a water contest that happens at noon. And that has never really made sense. I think, um, before when we would have all the festivities on Main Street, it made sense. But now that we've shifted off of Main Street for obvious liability reasons um, with the cobblestones, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to have that street closed for such a long period of time inconveniencing people on 4th of July. So we decided to push it back a little bit earlier, get the water contest down, done, and then um, folks can then work their way over to Children's Beach where we have all of our, our fun activities like Liz's puppet show. Um, and Mackie Titos, um, you know, face painting the whole whole nine yard. Um, this weekend, we also have the Nantucket uh, Book Festival that kicks off on Thursday. A lot of great free community events. So I highly recommend you go to their website and check it out. I'm really excited that Margaret Atwood is coming to the island. And I'm trying really hard not to fangirl out because um, I'm so excited. So, um, so I, I hope to see you all at any of these these events um, through throughout this past this next weekend, and then of course high school graduation where um, culture and tourism worked with the DDI office, um, the NHA, and the public school to uh, present Eunice Ross with an honorary diploma. So that is happening at this year's graduation, which is on Friday at. Oh my gosh, Nels, I'm so terrible. Is it 5.30? I'll tell you in one second. I was thinking 6 o'clock, but I'll tell you in one second. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we both have to be there. We should know what time it is. Starts at 6. 6, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's sort of what we have going on just for this month. I'll quickly give you the numbers for last month, um, visitors. So it was, oh, I'm sorry. On the port. There we go. I was looking at uh, Memorial Weekend. Uh, so, well, I'll give you Memorial Weekend since I have it up. Um, so for Memorial Weekend, we had 26,800 visitors to the island. I pulled the numbers from the 24th to the 27th. Hmm. Excuse me. So that's looking at Friday to that Monday. It is. Um, it does show that it's about uh, 1,600 more people than we had the year before which is interesting because it really, it definitely felt a little quieter. Uh, but what I did notice is the difference in age between the folks that were here this year and the folks that were here last year. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Uh, we definitely had uh, an older age group coming out for Memorial Weekend than we did uh, last year. So I think that's that might, that might have a lot to do with why it felt quieter and it felt like people were on their best behaviors. <laughs> Um, naturally, the most popular locations were uh, the gazebo, crew, and the chicken box. <laughs> I don't think there are any surprises there. So that's that's really Memorial Weekend. Um, to look at all of May as a whole, we had 61,900 visitors. 
uh, in May for this year. Um, and the most popular gazebo is is really up there with with popularity. I think a lot of people are just really excited that it's it's open. Um, most of our visitors are arriving on the island um, via the airport, the High Line following, and then the steamship. Like I mentioned, the gazebo and crew are the most popular locations on the island, um, which always surprises me because I'm, I'm expecting to hear that it's uh, the brewery with all the folks that we have looking for the brewery shuttle. The most popular day um, on the island throughout May was definitely Friday. We had massive spike on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday um, trailing closely behind. And then Tuesday was the slowest day uh, on the island. And I think many of you, if, you, if you're downtown, it really it really feels like Tuesday and Wednesday, but it's like a ghost town around. And then uh, folks are really traveling between um, 11 o'clock and, and uh, 6 o'clock for our, I'm sorry, 11 o'clock and 6 7.30 for our day trippers. So that's that's the island at a glance um, throughout the month of May. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Matt? Take one of those pictures and pictures. Yeah, I was just curious. I, are like, I saw, I think it was a last Wednesday or something. I think I saw like the collect groups and stuff. And I'm just curious, like, are the boats with the steamships issues and things like that, are they affecting? Have you heard anything about that? Because I know I been even having issues with the steamship fast race canceling driving all the customers to the high line and then the high line sells out and then last yeah. wednesday it was sold out till i think 5 p.m coming to the island and so it's i, I had to bring some drivers from off island and, and i couldn't get them over here until like noon or so luckily they finally got them on but they were on standby until 5 p.m or you know until they were able to get them off the standby list. And and so I just wondering if that's affecting visitor service as far as people coming here, or, you know, we've heard any feedback on that. So I haven't personally heard any feedback from visitors coming to the island about um, the ferries being canceled. But what I've heard a lot of feedback from or who I've heard a lot of feedback from are, are residents on the island who are having a really hard time trying to get on and off the island. Um, and then commuters as well. So our, our, our workers that come over and, and then we, those are really the, the, the people who would, who contact me, David would be able to speak, uh, more to the visitors and if they've been saying anything as they pop into, into the office downstairs. I haven't really gotten any feedback about the boat issue, but, uh, you know, it is on everybody's mind. Yeah. And I think, um, Right now, it's it's heavy day tripper season. So I think a lot of people, if they can't come over to the island, they, you know, let's say they can't come on a Tuesday, they would then change their trip for Wednesday. If they're if they have the flexibility, or they would go to Martha's Vineyard, um, which is a bummer for us on the island with with our businesses. I think if it, it goes without saying that if it continues like this, will definitely hurt the summer, um, which is going to be really unfortunate. So. I'll keep watching the numbers and comparing. I was genuinely surprised to see how many people were flying into the island uh, and uh, compared to last year, because it was mostly a high line and, and steamship on there with flying in from Logan. I think Logan was number four on the list um, after after um, New York. So I, I was surprised to see how many how many folks are now flying into the island. And I think that probably has a lot to do with people not wanting to chance it with with the boats and the uncertainty of it all. And I can't say I believe them. So the flights are pretty cheap right now too. Yeah. All right, any other questions for Shanta? Okay, thank you. Um, David. Yes. Um, all right, so I gave you the numbers for May and um, the one thing I want to point out is that um, we had a little uh, dip in the uh, numbers for uh, visitors coming to the, um, uh, the overall. Um, that's mainly because uh, we did not have the Straight Wharf kiosk open because we had a, just a staff shortage at that time. So... Um, had that been open, I think our numbers would have been back to where they were the, the year before. But if you notice that um, 
when you compare it to, you know, just the office itself compared to the previous year of 23 and 22, uh, it, it was higher. Um, and so um, hopefully, uh, you know, next year uh, we won't have that issue in May. Um, we also had um, Memorial Weekend uh, was pretty strong uh, overall. And, um, you know, we also have um, uh, the passports, which, is, you know, people are still coming in to um, do that and on Monday and Wednesdays. And um, so overall, I think we're doing pretty well. Um, we're now open seven days a week. Um, and the staff is coming back in, and um, that's pretty much it for me. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Um, David, I have a quick question. It looks like mailings were up considerably in May. Was that to a visitor center? Or a yeah, that was actually one travel agency wanted 100 TNLs. Uh, okay. Um, I assumed that that was the case. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions for David? Matt, go ahead. David, just curious. I was down there the other day. Uh, is it construction with the town building? Is that affecting you guys at all? As far as Not, I, I had to walk around when I. Yeah, the only, you know, that's that's winding down. But the thing is, it, it presented a few problems with parking, uh, especially out front with the hotel vans. Uh, people looking for a place to park when you got a, you know, um, a dumpster in front and, um, you know, the the uh, crane thing that's over at the town building. And, and so but that should be uh, done soon. And, and other than that, there just no no issues. OK, any other questions for David? Okay, seeing none. Any other items that we want to discuss? I believe that we usually suspend meetings in July and August. Am I correct on that? I think we do. Um, but we can always obviously communicate any concerns or questions to Chanta or David, or anytime you need us, we can always call a meeting if there's some issues that you would um, like us to discuss. I believe that this would have been Sarah's last meeting. Her term expires this month and she has opted not to renew. I would love it in the minutes of a big thank you for her years of service to us and possibly a letter for her file to keep for the years she was here would be appropriate. Matt, I think your term ends this year as well so we'll have to discuss that so um we do have an opening i don't know if anyone has approached Shata about serving or if anyone has suggestions um i still think it would be nice uh, to um see someone that's sort of on the ground and meeting a lot of people maybe someone from the bike shops or somewhere that we can help promote some of their things but um uh, I'll leave that up to the group to discuss. And Shanta, you can please reach out to us if there's any questions. Anything else you want to bring up today? Just uh, can I just clarify that with with Matt's Matt's term, Matt? You can reapply. Um, yeah. So yeah, I sent it. I already sent it to Maureen. Okay. Uh, Maureen, uh, I sent it about a month ago. Okay. Okay. My re, right. yeah, my re application or whatever too. Did did you get that in the mail or through email? Email to Maureen. She received it, but I think because we're town manager, I think they get through all the other stuff first through all the select board appointed candidates and all that stuff, and then eventually when town man when Libby has time. Okay. Town I, I did. Thank thank you for clarifying that. I didn't know whether they had reached out to you or not and what your decision yeah, was. Yeah, she said so. she received it. So yeah. I, I don't know. But yeah, I agree. I was just going to make a quick comment. I agree with you, Mary. I think it'd be nice if we get even like a representative from BPAC or something like that here, just because I feel like visitor services and especially kind of like the Chambers Initiative and stuff to kind of push people towards bikes, I think kind of goes hand in hand a little bit too. Well, it helps. You know, I, I would love to see anyone, you know, 
from the land bank or someone that could be here to assist, um, you know, or the foundation much. We had Sarah represented, you know, Linda Loring, which was a great resource for us to know what was going on out there. So I guess we'll keep suggestions open. Peter, did you have a question? Yeah, just uh, a point of uh, a sales pitch you can use. Um, I've always told people that visitor services is um, a great starting point for someone who has recently moved to Nantucket and says, well, how do I get involved? But I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, it is one of the uh, least demanding, uh, you know, <laughs> assignments you could have. It, it, it just, it really works well. So when you encourage people, if you want to get started, visitor services is a great place to jump in. You meet, you meet once a month and you don't have to say anything unless you have something to say. So that's the pitch to use uh, with your neighbors who have moved in and are looking for a way to participate. Thank, thank you, Peter. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, it is 8.52. We like to stay on schedule. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved by Peter. Second. Seconded by Garrison. Garrison, Garrison Niles. I'll take a, do I have to do a roll call on this as well? No, I didn't think so. Thank you, Shanta, for shaking your head and letting me know that we're, we're, we're doing what we're supposed to. Thank you all for being here. I know it's getting busy. Hopefully our paths will cross, but please, if there's anything that you want to discuss or put on the agendas or bring forward, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to Chantal, David, um, and to me. Chantal, another comment? Just a point of, of order. You just need an all in favor and have everyone say aye. Okay. May I have an all in favor for a motion to adjourn? Aye. Aye. Garrison, aye. aye. Miles. Okay. So moved. Thank you all. And enjoy, you. This Bye -bye. enjoy this beautiful weather. Take care. Thank you.